So we'll move on to the next game, which is the Vegas Raiders against the LA Chargers. So we got the Raiders up here. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is limited. He is still in concussion protocol. So we'll see. Uh, Brian Hoyer might be in line for a start here, um, which uh, it might change some of my rankings. Um, Josh Jacobs is still going to be a start for me in either case. Um, Devontae Adams is still going to be a start for me in either case. Uh, if Jimmy Garoppolo goes or not, I think Devontae Adams is at this point matchup proof. It doesn't matter who's throwing the football. He's going to get targeted. He's going to get open. Um, and the quarterbacks are good enough to get him the ball. Um, so Jacoby Myers might go from a start to a sleeper, depending on what happens at the quarterback position. If Jimmy does go, he is going to be a start. If he doesn't go, he is going to be a sleeper for me. I still like him either way in this matchup. Um, I just don't, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't love him if, if Brian Hoyer was playing. Hunter Renfro is going to be a sit. Austin Hooper is going to be a sit in this defense, um, just based on who they're playing. Uh, I do like this defense. I, I like the way they get after the quarterback and they do make plays. Um, but against the Chargers, I don't love it. I don't think this is a great matchup for them against a, an offense that is um, moving the football really well and and can throw the ball downfield really well um, and and has a lot of big playability. Um, so I don't love that. So for the Chargers. Austin Eckler was limited. Um, they they did come out and say that he's probably going to be held out until after their bye week. Um, so he might miss a couple more weeks. Um, so Justin Herbert, obviously, is going to be a start. Eckler is going to be a sit. Um, I just don't see him going yet. Uh, and Josh Kelly is going to be a sit, uh, even if Austin Eckler doesn't or doesn't go, that um, Josh Kelly has been uh, very inefficient. Uh, ever since he's gotten the majority of the workload there. Um, so he's going to be a sit for me, especially against this defense, who's not terrible, um, and they are good against the run. Kane Allen's going to be a start. Quentin Johnston is a sleeper for me. So these are the two big priority ads at the receiver position this week. have been Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnston with the Mike Williams injury from last week. So Josh Palmer is going to be a start for us. I think he's going to have uh, – really great production. Um, I know a lot of people have been pointing to be like, oh, well, he, you know, he was a starter last year and he really wasn't that efficient. And we all thought we had these big hopes for Palmer. It's like, yeah, but in most of those games, they were out both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Keenan Allen is still on the other side and he's still drawing attention. It allows Palmer to be kind of the number two, get, get lesser coverage against him. Um, and, and I do think that Palmer is in line for as long as he is the number two there and Keenan Allen is healthy. I do like Palmer as a starter. Quentin Johnson, I do think that we're going to see his involvement ev I, uh, continue to evolve um, as the season goes on. So if you tuned into our short that we did last week and even in our waiver episode, we talked about this kind of dynamic that if you need production right now, Palmer's your guy. If you can wait a couple of weeks and you want to wait and see as Quentin Johnson starts to develop, Quentin Johnson, I think, is going to be the guy in the long term. But he's not there yet, which is why he's still a sleeper for us. We got to see the production um, in pretty much all of our rankings. We got to see the production prior to us going ahead and saying start this guy. Um, more than more than likely, we're going to favor the sit. But I do like him as a sleeper this week, um, just based on the, the volume that he might get. Um, the other. Uh, did not participate this week uh, was Gerald Everett. He doesn't look like he's going to be a go. Um, if he doesn't go, uh, then I really like Donald Parham as a sleeper. He's um, pretty high up on my on my tight end rankings uh, for if, if Gerald Everett doesn't go. Um, he's, he's been involved in the red zone. He's, he's caught multiple touchdowns this season. Um, so I really like Donald Parham as a sleeper if Gerald Everett doesn't go, especially with the Mike Evans or Mike Williams injury. Um, we don't really know who the other guy is going to be. Either Keenan Allen's just going to get targeted 20 times a game again, um, or there's going to be other guys that step up, and Parham is going to be a guy that does that can step up. The Chargers defense is going to be a start for me this week. I do like this matchup for them. Um, I think that they're going to get after, especially if Garoppolo doesn't go, I think that they're going to get after Hoyer. They're going to probably be good for an interception and a couple sacks um, and, and, and uh, for a Raiders team that is struggling to score the football right now. Um, so I do like uh, I do like the Chargers defense. So go ahead and there, go ahead and start them if you have them. Um, moving on to our next matchup, which is going to be the New England Patriots versus Dallas Cowboys. So 
Patriots, um, their offense really struggled last week against the Jets. Uh, they had one big play, and that was pretty much it. They got shut down the second half. Uh, the My favorite matchup in this game is it's a Zeke uh, homecoming. All right, It's at Dallas. Zeke is going home uh, to where he's been his entire career. So um, Mac Jones will go top to bottom. Mac Jones is going to be a sit. Ramondre's just got to be a start. Again, we've said this three or four times already. Um, the the injuries at the running back position, you got to start him. But my sleeper for this game, my big sleeper for this game is Zeke in a, in a homecoming game. Um, I love these matchups. We've seen it historically when guys go back to their team that they played with their entire career. Even if it's a bad matchup for them, they're going to produce. Um, I like Zeke for you know 50 yards and, and maybe a touchdown in this game. Um, the way the Arizona Cardinals kind of did whatever they wanted on the ground last week against uh, the uh, – uh, the Dallas Cowboys, Bill Belichick, the way he schemes, um, you know, he's probably going to the uh, to Bill O'Brien and saying, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to attack this defense. And this is how we're going to get some advantages. Um, so I do think Ramondre Stevenson and Zeke are going to be uh, having decent games this week. Uh, I'm going to probably start uh, or sit most of my pass catchers except for Hunter Henry. I do like Kendrick Bourne as a sleeper in this play just because there's someone ha- someone other than Henry has to be involved in the receiving game um, for them to stay in this game. And they're probably going to be down in this game, and um, the Cowboys are probably going to win this game, but um, they're going to probably have to pass the ball. Uh, I do like the Patriots' defense. They've been an elite defense so far, so you got to start them. Um, and, uh, um, you know, until until they, they break for you. I mean, they're going to give up points, but uh, I still think it's it's okay uh, that they, they're, they're good enough on the um, – on the front, the front end to to limit what Dallas wants to do. Um, so moving on to the Cowboys, we got uh, Dak as a sit. Um, again, I just I like the the Patriots secondary. Or I, I like the Patriots defense. I'm not in love with their secondary, but I like the Patriots defense here. And uh, Dak struggled at times uh, this season. He struggled last week, um, and and Belichick has a way to take advantage of your weakness. Um, so. Uh, you know, even though I bring it back up, um, Pollard is going to be a start for us just because of the uh, the volume that he gets, and he's been pretty efficient. Dowdle um, replaces Deuce Vaughn on here. His his usage continues to go up and up. He's still going to be a sip for us, but I do like him as the season continues to move forward as a change of pace back. Um, I, I I think his involvement is going to keep increasing um, as the season goes on. Uh, and pretty much all the other pass catchers are going to be starts for me. Michael Gallup is going to be a sit. Um, he's not up on this board, but CeeDee Lamb is going to be a start, even though Belichick does like to take away the main weapons of the offense. Um, I still think CeeDee Lamb, the way they use him, um, you know, I kind of said, I had to talk, discuss a discussion with John o last week about this because he wanted to sit CeeDee Lamb, um, or it was two weeks ago, he wanted to sit CeeDee Lamb against the Jets. And I said, no, I mean, like, the, he's like, oh, well, he's going to get sauce and he's going to get DJ Reed. I'm like, no, like, they, the way they use C.D. Lamb is so good. They they bring him around and find the matchup that's good for him. He can run out of the slot. He runs from you know from the tight end position. They'll bring him in the backfield. They'll put him out wide if they if they wanna if they wanna use him there. Um, the way they scheme him into games, I just think that he's gonna get his. So you gotta start C.D. Lamb. I think Brandon Cooks is in line for a good game here. Uh, again, the the Eagles secondary or the Patriots second secondary has not been great and they've been susceptible to um to the passing game so i do like brandon cooks here jake ferguson has been uh, a really nice pickup and uh, a nice sleeper for the tight end position he's uh the way he's being targeted in the red zone you gotta love it so he's gonna be a, be a start for us and then this cowboys defense just like the patriots defense they've been absolutely crushing so you've got to start your studs and you got to start your uh, your players here so go ahead and start the cowboys defense um you're gonna love it you're gonna like it. You're gonna like the way you look. Um, sorry, a lot of talking. I want to try to break this up a little bit for you, but I want to try to get this through and get the information out um, to you guys as quickly as possible. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna need a nice glass of water after this. A nice glass of water. We're doing this in one cut too. Like I'm not taking breaks. We're not cutting and splicing this up. I'm going right through. We're hammering through. We're at 57 minutes now, strong, nonstop talking. This is what I love to do. This is what I'm made for. I'm made for this. <laughs> we got the Cardinals and San Francisco next. All right, the Cardinals, big surprise from last week, knocking off the Cowboys. Got another tough matchup this week against the San Francisco 49ers who have been 
just the the class of the NFL right now. They they'll beat you in every single way. They're really really efficient. I really liked uh, the comparison I, I read today that Brock Purdy is uh, the John Stockton of this team, um, and and we're not on the 49ers yet, but we'll get to it. Um, the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, even though Josh Dobbs had a really impressive game last week, he's still going to be a start. Uh, this is a good defense he's going up against. He's going to be uh, a, a, or he's going to be a sit for us. Um, Connor. As much as I don't like this matchup, and as much as I don't love this matchup, he's been a top 20 uh, rusher in each of the first three weeks. His volume is there. He's, uh, I think, third in terms of rushing attempts in the league. you got to start that. you got to love that. Um, so just volume alone. Um, and Keontae, uh, Keontae Ingram was uh, limited to practice this week, so um, the volume is going to be there for him. So just based on a volume play alone, he's going to be a start. Um now, uh, a couple notes on the Cardinals is that Hollywood Brown uh, injured his thumb this week. Uh, it didn't require surgery, uh, but there, it, it, he might be a game time decision. If he doesn't go, I like Rondell Moore as a sleeper. Same as Zach Ertz as a sleeper. Michael Wilson, although I do like uh, his increased usage, um, I don't think his volume is and this offense is good enough to uh, keep uh, you know play him um, even on a streaming basis here um, until he's you know the streamers are you got to get into the end zone you got to be getting you know 80 to 100 yards and he's he's not there yet um, but I do like the potential from him so he's a guy that you should be keeping an eye on Rondell Moore's involvement in this offense has been significantly better he had the big big long touchdown run last week um, from the backfield so I do like that 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 scheme where they're lining up some of the receivers and some of their playmakers in the backfield to kind of spell James Conner a little bit. So again, Zach Ertz, Rondell Moore, sleepers for us, and the Cardinals defense is going to be a sleeper for us, okay? Um, a, they've been, I'll say this, the Cardinals have probably been the biggest shock for me in, in, and I think the biggest shock for the NFL. I know that they're one and two, um, but they did just beat the Cowboys. But and and they lost in in just a really bad fashion to the uh, uh, the Giants. But this defense has played really really well. Um, this has been a, a bright spot for this team. Um, and if and when Kyler comes back, this team is going to be halfway decent. Um, the the defense is legit. They're creating turnovers. They're playing hard. They're playing tough. They're playing fast. Um, they're swarming to the football. They're make, they're creating negative plays. Uh, on a consistent basis and creating turnovers. Um, you got to love what you've seen from this defense, and that's why they're a sleeper for me. I, and, and I know a lot of people probably are going to disagree with this, but and especially against the 49ers. Um, but the 49ers might be, you know, they, they've had, they have two guys that, that are limited or did not participate. Um, and we'll move and talk to talk about them is um, the 49ers. So, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of skip around a little bit. So if, if these guys go, they're going to be starts. But Debo did not participate in practice this week. Brandon Ayuk was limited in practice this week. So if those two guys don't go, I don't know how much I love. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a Christian McCaffrey. He's going to have his, right? And and George Kittle probably will be more involved. I do think that the 49ers do win this game. Um, but uh, the Cardinals have a good shot at at – creating a closer game than most people think. Uh, I'd like to see the spread as we get closer to this game on what it's going to be as they start to figure out if Debo is going to play or if Ayuk is going to play, um, what the spread en ends up becoming. Um, but I, I, if I'm a betting man, I would take the Cardinals against the spread um, this week uh, if, if these guys don't go. Um, so well, we're going to assume that they do go. So Brock Purdy is going to be a start if he does go. Christian McCaffrey is going to be a start. Eli Mitchell is going to be a sip. Debo and Ayuk, if they go, if one of them goes, he's going to be a start. You know, if Debo doesn't end up playing and Ayuk plays, he's going to be a start. If the vice versa, they're going to be a start. You're going to start both these guys if they both start. Um, George Kittle is going to be a start, and the 49ers defense is going to be a start. Um, the 49ers defense has been really, really good, um, even though they've let up some points here and there. And the Cardinals, um, you know, they've been running the football really efficiently, efficiently and, and Dobbs has been playing really well um, for a guy that was traded to the team you know, a week before the season started. Um, so I do like the Niners defense here. And basically, if you have a 49er, go ahead and play him. Um, this is a good matchup for them. I'm moving along. 
Uh, we got two games left. So the, the Sunday night game here, we got the Chiefs against the Jets. Um, the the Swift New York Jets tour on the New York tour here. Um, yeah, if you got a Chief, um, not necessarily start him. So Mahomes, you're going to start. Pacheco, you're going to start. McKinnon's a sleeper here. Travis Kelsey is going to be a start. Sky Moore is my sleeper and probably the only wide receiver from this team that I'm going to start. Uh, MVS is going to be a sit for us. Um, and the Chiefs defense is going to be a start. Uh, that's, that's a no-brainer. Um, start defenses against the Jets. They don't put up points. Uh, and if they do, their defense is going to score and not their offense. So um, let's talk about the Chiefs really quick and, and their wide receivers. Uh, it's, it's a real struggle to start any of these guys. Like I know uh, Rashi Rice is is probably the more more interesting guy, him and Sky Moore, uh, because of their continued in increased involvement. But the, the way they spread the ball out, I mean, Travis Kelce is the guy there, so he's getting the majority of the targets. And then in the red zone, we saw McKinnon have two touchdowns last week. Um, so I don't love any of these receivers for red zone plays. It's not like one of them gets like a huge red zone target share um down the field they like mvs they like justin watson um you know rushy rice has been involved uh and, and getting a con continued route run or, or um uh, uh route participation and uh and snap share but i don't know how much i trust any of these receivers uh as an every week starter um, i think that they're going to be more matchup plays and and one of them on a week to week is going to probably give up a decent performance, but those guys can change week to week. It's, I think the only pass catcher that's going to be a consistent week to week starter is going to be Travis Kelson. We said this in the preseason that this is the struggle with this team is, uh, you know, we have the, one of the best offenses in football, if not the best offense in football. And it's weird that you don't have multiple pass catchers that are every week starters. And that's because Mahomes likes to spread the ball out. And no one's going to get over over hyper targeted other than Travis Kelce. Um, you know, even Noah Gray is going to get involved in, in the passing game, and and um, so I don't I don't love any of the the receivers for this game. I do like the the rushing uh, the running attack, and I do think that they're going to get ahead in this game and then just kind of run the clock out. I don't anticipate this being a close game. Um, I, I'm I'm a Jets fan, so this is going to be a tough one for me to watch. And because it's the only game on, I'm going to be forced to sit there and watch and. I'm just hoping that there's no butt fumble um, like they're, you know, like every every time the Jets are on on national television and they are the the only, only game, there's something embarrassing or terrible that happens to the Jets. So um, I'm hoping that it this isn't one of those weeks again um, for uh, and, and just some injury notes. Pacheco and Mahomes were both on the injury report. They both practiced in full. Tony was limited. So, again, Tony is just going to be a sit for, for me. I, I just don't trust any of these pass catchers or any of these receivers in this in this game. Um, moving along to uh, the Jets, um, shocker, everyone's a sit except for Garrett Wilson. Um, I think Garrett Wilson, again, he – I said this last week, is he's going to be the only guy I really trust in this offense as of right now. Um, eventually, Brees is going to get going. But Garrett Wilson is – he's – it's not like he's even getting a lot of volume, but he's a guy that just he needs one play and he can break off for 75 yards and score. Um, and so I don't love this offense. Uh, you know, I, I'm I, I'm so I'm 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 really caught in between on on I don't love Zach Wilson. Um, I, I think that you see, you know, you saw the one drive where they scored last last week where he looks fantastic. He made all the elite throws. He made like throws that most most NFL quarterbacks don't make. He was making on that drive and then the next drive they go three and out and so he's just so inconsistent where you see these flashes of like oh well he's really talented this is why they drafted the number two to what the hell is this guy doing out there like he he looks lost at times but then he looks really poised at times and uh and looks really good at times and and but it's so inconsistent he can't he hasn't put a full game together in his entire career um and you can't trust the offensive players around him until then. Uh, but Garrett Wilson is a guy that you have to play just based on the fact that, like, he can go for a buck ten and a touchdown with three or four targets. Um, and so uh, that that reason alone, like, I get the hesitation. I get the, the wanting to trade him and wanting to get rid of him. But at this point, um, you're going to try to trade him, and you're not really going to get a lot for him, and you're not going to get his true value. And uh, – you know, who knows if they make a quarterback change, what Garrett Wilson's production is going to be like. We saw Garrett Wilson be productive with other quarterbacks in there. So um, 
I, I, I'd hold right now, and and until then, he's a flex play, uh, low end wide receiver too, but um, not much more than that. Um, everyone else on the Jets, just go ahead and sit. And moving on to the last game of the slate, we're almost there. We we've almost made it. Um, so we got the Seattle Seahawks versus the New York Giants. We got back to back nights and games at MetLife. Uh, I'm really hoping that there's no um, there's no injuries here. And my life stadium is a freaking mess. Um, for those of you guys who've never played on turf, it's it's a nightmare. Um, it's terrible. Um, it's it's great for the 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 owner of the field because the maintenance is much lower on it, but it is terrible. And it feels um, you know it, it sometimes just feels like you're running on concrete with cleats, and it's just your knees feel terrible, your hips feel terrible, your back feels terrible afterwards. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully the, you know, the NFL PA can negotiate, they have the negotiation, the gambling terms, but they haven't been able to fight for new turf and new, uh, new, uh, field conditions after all these major significant injuries that we've seen statistically happen much at a much higher rate at the, on the, uh, on the field, uh, than they do on, on regular, uh, or on the turf than they do on regular grass. Um, so, you know, hopefully the NFLPA gets it together and starts fighting for, for real things instead of gambling, uh, which is insignificant to, um, uh, to the players. Um, so moving on to the Seahawks, that was my little rant. So, uh, thanks for listening. That's my therapy for the night. Um, so the Seattle Seahawks, uh, Gino, after the disappointing performance last week, uh, he should bounce back against the, the Giants. Um, you're going to go ahead and start him. Kenneth Walker's been been really good. Um, really like the way he's been playing. Um, and so you're going to go ahead and start him. Zach Charbonnet is going to be a sit. Um, until this backfield gets a little bit more uh, towards the 50% split mark, uh, I, I don't think Zach Charbonnet is going to get the volume enough to be uh, significant um, in this offense unless they're in like a complete blowout game or they're in a really, really favorable matchup, which I don't think is this game. Um then, uh, then I and then I I'm I'm hesitant to start him in any format. Um, DK Metcalf was limited in practice or did not participate in practice this week, um, but this is the same as last week. Uh, last week he was limited and did not participate in multiple practices. He still played. He's nursing a rib injury that he sustained in week two. Uh, last week he even on a limited basis he had six receptions, 112 yards. Um, so you're going to go ahead and fire him up. Uh, he's going to be uh, productive. Um, fantasy player for you this week. Tyler Lockett is another one. He's going to be a start. JSN is going to be a sit. <clears throat> You're not starting any tight ends for the Seahawks. They've just used multiple of them, and you never know who's going to get used. So it's um, uh, not a great play. Um, but for the And then the Seahawks defense, you are going to sit. Um, I actually do think – we'll switch over to the Giants. I do think the Giants actually have a good uh, – uh, matchup in this game um i like daniel jones as a start this week if saquon goes i like him as a start if he does not go matthew braid is going to be a sit for me i just don't think his volume was there he did fall into the end zone last week um which kind of saved his week um much like damian pierce um but uh daniel jones um the, the seattle seahawks defense is kind of beat up right now uh, their secondary is beat up they're they're just across on all three levels they're they're injured right now um, I like Daniel Jones to bounce back this game. Um, and I do uh, think that the the receivers are going to get more involved in this game as well because the secondary is is injured. Um, so Isaiah Hodgins and Jalen Wyatt are going to, or Jalen Hyatt, not Wyatt, um, Jalen Hyatt are going to be both sleepers for me. Oh, and don't have a picture up there for Jalen Hyatt. Um, uh, but anyway, he's he's going to be a sleeper for me. Um, I do like the the pass catchers here. Uh, like I said, I do think that the the Seahawks secondary is susceptible to big plays, um, and they're susceptible to uh, the downfield uh, for a Monday night game. Um, the weather should be cleared up by then. The, uh, New York, uh, New Jersey, the tri state area has some bad weather um, yesterday and today, going into tomorrow. Um, but Sunday, uh, it should be uh, kind of sloppy there. But Monday night, it should be uh, fairly clear um from from reports that i'm reading so we'll keep uh, an eye on the weather for this game but uh even so daniel jones is going to be a start for me i do like his ability on the ground um but uh if the weather is sloppy then um it's going to affect how what i what i view from the pass catchers 
Darren Waller, I'm, I'm really feeling this week is going to be coming out of the shell. Uh, I think he's going to be more heavily involved. Uh, I think this whole this whole offense is going to be more heavily involved, especially from the passing game. Um, so I do like him this week as a start. Um, Giants defense, go ahead and sit. Uh, they've been they've been kind of beat up all season, get, getting beat up on all season. All right, we made it. We made it. There's a lot of talking from me. I'm going to try to go and grab, grab a glass of water and, and really smooth out the, the, uh, the throat for me. Um, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, really thanks for tuning in. Uh, this episode is going to drop. So grab your cup of coffee. Um, it's uh, dropping Saturday morning. Uh, we should have the timestamps on the bottom. So if you do want to skip ahead to certain matchups, go ahead and do that. Um, if you do have any questions on start sits, if you do have any questions on who, what player to start over, go ahead and leave a comment in um, the, uh, uh, the comment section. We're going to get back to you. We do not get notifications on that, so we try to reach out as quickly as possible. Even if it's Sunday morning, uh, you know, before the game, give us a little bit of time there because we're making moves too. We're trying to focus on our, our fantasy teams. Uh, but we will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget, like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell um, in the bottom. And uh, good luck on your matchups this week. I hope that if you're 3-0, you go 4-0. If you're 0-3, you go 1-3. and um, And all you guys in the middle, uh, I hope you start to uh, narrow the gap between you and the top of the league. Um, go ahead and make good decisions. Um, start your studs, guys. Uh, and, and good luck. I'll tune in next time. See ya.